do a little more review. In the box here, I also came across a couple items, and here is where uh, Mr. Dave Harborside came in. Now, Dave Harborside, um, I think I have five of them there. One, two, three, four. Okay, Dave Harborside acquired the, uh, in 1989, Let's start. In 1989, I had a magic shop, and the magic shop I had was in West New York, New Jersey, and my very first creditor, the very first company I bought anything from was the S.S. Adams Company. So I drove down there with my partner at the time, and we, because I opened up the shop with a partner, it was too much for me at the time, and, and I met uh, Chris Adams. Now, Chris Adams is the grandson of Soren Adams, who started the company. Now, for people that don't know the S.S. Adams Company, this is the company that started by inventing the joy buzzer, um, they did, they could have had the whoopee cushion, but they actually skipped on that, but it was a big mistake on their part, but they had the joy bus or the snake in a nut can. So they're very well known. And anytime you walk to a lot of the shops in Atlantic city, Coney Island and stuff, you would see SS Adams products. And the, these are some of the early SS Adams products. Now I'm not sure exactly what years these are from. They're probably from the early eighties. But you can see the packaging is a totally different color. Now here we have uh, six items. We have here the fantastic coin, the ball and base, all in the, the original packaging, the Adams coin catcher, the SS Adam ink bottle, the billiard balls, and we have this Vengali deck. Now, this one here, you can see the packaging in this one is a little warped, but see, one of the things that happened when I had to fire all my collection, a lot of it um, was water damaged, and some of it that was not water damaged survived. I mean, this one's, they survived inside a filing cabinet of all things, and they're in almost perfect condition, as you could see, there's, there's actually, you know, um, doesn't have any more of the fire smell for a while. <laughs> Most of my stuff did smell like fire, but anyway, that's the SS Adams. So, and now this are stuff that I'm finding as I'm going through the different boxes, which again, every week I'm gonna do a review. Of course, today's review, because I have not done any in a while, is a little longer. Um, now, when I go in the box here, um, I wanna show you guys uh, a few of the things I found here. Well, here, I have um, a couple of original Johnson Smith catalogs. I think this catalog is probably from 1969. Uh, they're not as popular as the 1970s catalog. This is probably 68, 69, just I came across this one first, but I do have, I don't know, probably a hundred catalogs of Johnson Smith. I, I had a couple more, believe it or not, I had in the fire after the fire, had taken place, uh, I was told that I, somebody actually broke into one of my bin units and stole about 20 or 30 original Johnson Smith catalogs from me. But anyway, this is again, uh, you could see it's a Johnson Smith catalog. I'm sorry that it's in the bag. I really don't want to take them out right now because it, this review will take a little longer than I wanted to. So here you go, okay? You guys could see, you see, Johnson Smith Company. Um, so we have that. Over here, somebody actually just wrote me and told me about the different jujitsus and karate courses that were sold that he's looking for some, and I told him if he gets, but this is one of the books that was sold uh, by the Johnson Smith Company. If you can see this, the, the original book here. And um, this has a little bit of everything. It's not just Johnson Smith, it has SS Adams, a few other things, because like I said, I'm doing the review. Now, one famous book that was sold by American Circle Corp, um, I think they sold it the most, even though I think the origination of most mail order companies, I've noticed that, you know, after all the years of research that I did, and as you guys know, I actually met uh, the owner of Honor House. I met up with him five times back in the 80s, uh, Edwin Wagman. I joined forces with the original Lou Weiss after I had my magic shop, and we reopened the original Fun Factory, which later became House of the Unusual. Uh, this is the Fun Factory that ran in the 1960s and 70s, and one of the good things about this was that in when I met Lou Weiss, uh, him being the original owner of this thing, and he was a person that I sent away for things when I was a kid, um, he's now in his mid-70s, and um, it was very interesting because I was able through him to meet a lot of the legends of mail order, 
and I was able to learn a lot of the story, history of mail order that I grew up with and I loved so much. And through him, I was able to meet uh, fascinating people. Uh, one of them was Bob Levy. Uh, he was the guy who, for American Circle Corp, actually was the advertising man for American Circle Corp. And then he went on to become, with Will Weiss, they started the Fun Factory. And then when I went back in the Fun Factory, that's why I, I asked him one day, I said, no wonder that the artwork always looks very similar to American Circle and Fun Factory because it was the same artist who did it. Um, so anyway, what I was going to say is that in 1938, when Action Comics first came out, the very first ever ad for mail order items was from the Johnson Smith Company, and it was placed in Action Comics. In the 1980s, the last mail order company that ever ran was probably 80, I mean, sorry, 80, um, 80 81, which I think was Johnson Smith as well. And for many, about 10 years, there was not another company that, would, that ran a mail order ad. When I'm saying mail order, I'm talking about a magic novelty ad like Honor House, Johnson Smith, on the can, you know, in any type of comic book. And then, and I go praise Jesus for this. Uh, God was nice enough to me to let me meet Lou Weiss and together, I was able to start the Fun Factory with him again. And we started as the Fun Factory before it became House of the Unusual. And in 1992, beginning of 93, but I think it appears in the February issue, which was on sale in December of that year, I was able with Lou Weiss to run a full page ad in DC Comics. So all the DC Comics that you guys can get from 1993 and what I'm saying, actually, the Christmas uh, 92 going into 93, uh, you will find out that if you look inside, there's an ad for Fun Factory. That's my ad. And when I, I remember when we got the ad, I remember that Bernie Slotnick, which was the guy who did all the, the advertising for um, DC Comics for like 40 some odd years, or he was in charge of that department, said to me, it's funny that you guys are running an ad. We haven't had an ad in any of our comics in over 10 years. So it was funny after that that I was able to realize that our, my ad was actually the one that was the last one to ever run in a comic book. There hasn't been another ad since 1993 in comic books. And it was great. It was a great experience. And I thank God for that each day. And But anyway, um, one of the uh, other items I wanted to show you guys... Uh, now, as you can see, this one looks like it's falling apart here, but I have several. One of my favorite parts was the 25, 25 Lessons in Hypnotism. And here's a, an early thing. Now, I took it out of the envelope, and I, I didn't realize it, but it's it's so old that... Oh, look at this. It even has some wrinkling in the top there. But anyway, I in the beginning when I was trying to get a hold of this book, I, I must have spent like $300 in long distance phone calls looking at toy shop magazines trying to get a copy of 25 Lessons in Hypnotism because I'd never bought it. But I always wanted it. It was one of the most prominent ads I wanted. I used to love the ad in American Circle where the guy is hypnotizing the woman and stuff with the little stars in the background. And I always wanted that. And the story with that is kind of interesting because I didn't realize, I, I did notice that they ran the same thing in two different sides of the of the page and i'm like what's the difference between 25 lessons in hypnotism for a dollar and tw free coin free hypnotic coin with 25 lessons in hypnotism so i thought that it was the same price it just didn't understand and then one day mr todd mitchin my buddy todd oh my god i love him i love him because he this guy's phenomenal he was able to give me an original uh American Circle, 25 Lessons in Hypnotism with the coin. But what it really was was a flyer, a flyer that was actually sold by a company called Redip. And many companies sold it in, in the 1970s, but it had the hypno coin attached to it. But it had 25 lessons in, or hints inside the flyer. It stretches out. I don't have one here to show you right now, but I actually was able to reproduce that flyer. And I sell it. You can actually buy it in a, on eBay or you can buy it through a Dave Harvest ad. Uh, he has it under, I think, uh, he advertises it under Presco or something like that. I have it in in uh, the eBay store, House of the Unusual. Uh, David, I think, is Presco, if I'm correct, or Xanadu, Xanadu Magic, which is one. But either, it's not really important right now because 
we are opening an Acme House novelty company, me and, and Dave Harvest and we're going to be selling it there. So you'll be able to acquire if you, if you want, because it is a phenomenal product. I'm actually going to show it to you guys in a second, and you'll see what we did. But anyway, the 25 lessons of hypnotism. Um, yeah, there you go. See, a piece of paper just fell off it. <laughs> the 25 lessons of hypnotism. When I first started looking for this book, I must have spent, oh gosh, like, like I said, $300. I was able to acquire it. And it was not the one here. It's not the same cover. It just said 25 lessons. And then later, I probably have, no kidding, about 18 or 22 copies of this book right now. So it doesn't matter that that one's falling apart. I have more. Now, um, I guess one final, th two things I want to finally show you guys. When I was in school, one of my favorite, everybody remembers scholastic books. You know, you get in school, you can order books, and it was all so fun. And one of the books I ordered that I'll never forget, and I, I kind of liked it because it did have kind of the, the cover reminds me a little bit of the Seven Foot Monster Ghost. And it's just, it was called Mr. Corbett's Magician. This book, phenomenal book, beautiful artwork, beautiful cover. I lost mine in the fire, my original, and I was able to get it a couple of years later through eBay. But this time I actually bought like seven copies because I, I love this, this cover in particular is phenomenal. Um, so that's that book there. And one company that I came across uh, in the 1980s was called Amazing One or uh, Information Unlimited. And this company, Information Unlimited, would run ads in popular mechanics and popular science, and they sell you laser gun plans. And in fact, Bob Iannini, the, the owner and founder of the company, uh, he, if I remember very clearly, he wrote a book, uh, How to Build Your Own Laser, Laser, Facer, and Ion Ray Gun. And I acquired the book. In fact, I used to sell it in my magic shop, so I still have a couple of copies of the book. But one day I called them up, and I said, Hey, Bob, can I... Can I use your catalog in my ma magic shop? And now this is before I even started the Fun Factory. It's way back. And he goes, sure. So here, here's an original Information Unlimited catalog. And I used to use this in my store. And what I would do is, um, you know, anybody wanted to buy something, I would sell it to them. And then I get a wholesale price from, from Bob Iannini. And also, I remember Bob said to me that if I ever produce my catalog, he will run an ad for me in this catalog. And to this day, Information Unlimited is still in business, and they probably, it's a multi-million dollar company. They make all the lasers, you know, very sophisticated scientific stuff, but just up my alley.